That's what we're studying here, the disk method. The reason we call it the disk method is that no matter where you cut your object, you're always going to see a cross section that's going to look like a circle or a disk, right? That's the reason why we call it the disk method. So there's not anything fancy or complicated. That's the only reason that we call it because you're always going to have a cross section that's going to look like an area like that. So notice what we're doing is all we're doing is we're adding up. This is the cross sectional area. This is A of X. Uh, that we talked about earlier. You know, we said in general to find the volume of an object, we just, we need to have the area, cross-sectional area, as a function of x, and then we just integrate and add it up over the length of the object. That is what this is. This is the cross-sectional area as a function of x. So the disk method is really just what we learned in the last section. It's just a very specific application. When you revolve your object around the x-axis, you're always going to get cross-sections that are going to be circles. So you're always going to have cross-section areas that are going to be pi times f of x squared. So my advice to you, and I'll just kind of gently suggest, don't try to memorize the, the, uh, the uh, disk method and the washer method and the shell method. Don't memorize them as just things to memorize. Really try to understand what they are. So when you're on a test and you're trying to figure out how to integrate best, you'll have a better understanding of what to do. This one makes sense because when you're looking at an object revolving around the x-axis, then the cross-sectional area is pi times the radius squared, which in this case the radius is f of x. So pi f of x squared dx, we're adding it up across the entire extent of the object between a and b. That is the disk method. So let's go ahead and do a few problems to, you know, get some practice with this guy, with the disk method. So if you have a, a typical problem, might say, hey, you have a function f of x, which is x to the 3 halves, and I only care about the region between 0 and 1. And this is revolved around the x-axis. Find the volume of the object. That's basically what a problem is going to tell you. Revolve this guy around the x-axis. Find the volume between 0 and 1. And you're going to need to know how to set that up. You don't need to graph it. You don't really need to even know what it looks like, honestly, because you know that for the disk method, the volume is equal to be, going to be the integral from 0 to 1, because that's the length or the extent of the object times pi times f of x squared dx, which will be the integral from 0 to 1 of pi x to the 3 halves, that's f of x squared dx. And this is what I need to integrate. So if I go and grab this guy and I'll say, all right, integral from 0 to 1, pi comes outside the integral, that's just a constant. What do I get here? x to the 3 halves raised to the power of 2. Well, basically, I can multiply exponents. Anytime I have a power raised to a power, I can multiply these guys. So 3 halves times 2, the 2's are going to cancel. So all you're going to have in here is x cubed dx, once you actually do that power business in there. And so what's going to have is you'll happen is this will be pi over 4 x to the fourth power evaluated from 0 to 1. This is just a polynomial. We've done that a million, million times. And so now we just have to evaluate it. Here is pi over 4. And then on the inside, we evaluate it at the upper limit of integration minus the lower limit of integration, just like this. Now on the inside, 1 to the fourth is 1 minus this is going to be 0. So really the answer just remains pi over 4 because you're just multiplying by 1. So pi over 4 is the answer. So this is the volume. So if, if your original measurements, you know, were in terms of meters, let's say, from 0 to 1 meters, let's pretend, the extent of your object was 0 to 1 meters, and if your function is measuring the height of it in terms of meters, then this answer is going to be in, in terms of cubic meters because that's volume. If your original measurements were in centimeters and all that, then it's going to be cubic centimeters. So that's what you're getting is an actual volume calculation out of it. And what you're doing is you're adding up the cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area happens to be a circle, so pi r squared, which is f of x squared, and then you, you just do the simple calculus to get to the answer.